Sit up straight. Press your hands down, lengthen up through your side chest, side waist. Move your arm bones back to bring your shoulder blades into your back. Keep your arm bones back, but release your hands to your thighs and close your eyes. Send your thighs. With even and equal weight, your two sitting bones lengthen up through the front of your body. Make sure your shoulders are directly over your hips. And if you're not leaning forward or back on your sitting bones, then your shoulders should be directly over your hips. Lift your chest. Soften your neck and throat. Relax your jaw. Rest your tongue into the base of your mouth. Take slow, even breaths. And then gently open your eyes. Stand your legs out. <coughs> Come over to your hands and knees. Spread your fingers well. Uh, and then push your hips back to sit in child's pose. As you press your hands into the floor, use that pressure of your hands into the floor to get your hips further back. Now come back up to your hands and knees. Spread your fingers well, I'll tuck your toes underneath, and lift your hips high. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Now settle yourself into the pose by pressing through your fingertips, moving your heels further and further behind you. Lift your quadriceps up so the fronts of your legs engage and move towards your hips. And then press your thighs back to stretch the backs of your legs. And lift the backs of your legs up towards your hips. Press all 10 fingers into the floor. So 
We're going to be here a little bit. That's one minute so far, by the way. And uh, one of the things, I guess, that Anger Yoga is sometimes known for is long holds, especially when the teacher gets off on a tangent, starts talking about like the big toe or something. And just talks and talks and talks. And you're in the post. But the reason we're going to do a longer downward facing dog today, it's going to be a three minute dog. And you're almost at ten, two minutes right now. Is one of the tests, oh, we're actually not going to do headstand today, but one of the tests to see if you are ready for headstand is if you can do a three minute dog pose. Do you have the strength to do a three minute dog pose? So going back to the form of the pose, turn your forearms in and turn your upper arms out. So that ringing action works on straightening your arms, but also getting your shoulders and wrists into a good place so you can stay longer. Now press your fingers into the floor to move your hips back. You're almost there. Then press your thighs back even more to get more weight into your legs. Take a deep inhalation. And then with your exhalation, bend your knees and then come down. Rest your hips, rest your arms. Just let your arms rest rather than extending them forward. Come back up, come up to standing. Get some blocks if you need them for Uttanasana or forward fold. So blocks, no blocks. Get what you need. So have your feet parallel, spread your toes. Lift the fronts of your thighs, take your hands to your hips, roll your shoulders back. Then press your thighs back, fold forward, bring your hands to the bricks or to the floor. Start in Ardha Uttanasana, half fold. So you're sometimes called a flat back or a concave back. Move your thighs back and move your chest forward. And then go down further, letting your back round slightly. And release your head towards the floor. If you want to grab the opposite elbow, that will intensify the stretch. Keeping your arms to the side is Makes your arms a little lighter. You know, makes your torso a little lighter. So it's not as intense of a stretch in the back of the leg. If you're holding the opposite elbow, change the hold of the elbow, so the other arm is in front. Keep lifting the quadriceps up towards the hips, and hamstrings towards the hips. And then bring your hands forward, lift your chest, look forward. 
Heart of Uttanasana. And then bring your hands on your hips, elbows to the ceiling, inhale, come back up. All right. So instead of doing headstand today, we're going to do headstand prep. Um, and again, we're going to hold it for a while. We're not going to hold it for three minutes. Uh, it's a tough pose to hold for three minutes. So place your elbows directly under your shoulders. Interlock your finger to the webbing. Press your wrist down into the floor and have space between your hands. Then keep pressing your forearms down, turn your upper arms out, just like you do in dog pose, except now your forearms are, are stuck to the floor. So you still turn your upper arms out and make sure your shoulders are either in line with your elbows or uh, behind your elbows, not in front. Then tuck your toes underneath and lift your hips. So your head probably will hang. It won't touch the floor. It does depend on the length of your neck and the length of your arms. And the hair kind of grazes the floor, but someone with uh, longer arms, their head would be off the floor. And press your, your forearms to push your hips back and get more stretch in your armpits. Keep turning your upper arms out. Lift the backs of your thighs, lift the fronts of your thighs. So you may still get a hamstring stretch here. All right, bend your knees, come down. So that was a minute. Now we're going to do it again, so that was just a little rest. Change the interlock of your fingers. Still have the space between your palms. Press your forearms down. Turn your upper arms out. And then tuck your toes underneath again and lift your hips high. Now you can walk in, uh, and sometimes you're told to walk in, and in some ways it might make the pose easier if you're flexible. If you're not flexible, that will make the pose a lot harder. Or if you keep your heels lifted, that will make the pose harder because it's putting more weight in your arms. Open your neck and throat. Keep your upper arms turned out. Press your forearms into the floor to get some space in your armpits. Take a deep inhalation and then with your exhalation, rest back into child pose. Bring your hands by your knees, lift yourself up. All right, sit in Virasana. So Virasana, hero pose, knees together, feet apart. Sitting between your heels. I don't know if it's futile, futile, but I always press my thighs down, hoping that they'll get further down. Um, I don't know if it works. Anyway, make sure your toes are pointing straight back. See if you can press the little toe side of the foot into the floor. Then interlock your fingers. Turn your palms out and lift your arms up. Now 
as you sink your hips down, lift your wrist up. Pull your abdomen back, your lower ribs back, and then move your arms back. Now, if your arms are bent, don't bother moving them back, work on straightening them. But if your arms are straight and you have the flexibility, move your arms back without taking your ribs forward. So don't jut your ribs forward and take your arms back. So the arms move back based on the flexibility of the shoulders. Then bring your arms back in and down. Take them around behind. Roll your shoulders back. And then extend your arms back. So stretching the front of the shoulder. Lift your arms as high as possible. And then release. Rotate your shoulders a few times. Now interlock your, hand, your fingers again. Put the other finger on top, the other thumb on top. Bring your palms out. Lift your arms up. Get taller and taller in the wrist, taller and taller in the waist. Extend your hips. And then for a little variety, keep your arms up, come forward, tuck your toes underneath, and sit back. Stretch the uh, bottom of the foot. If this is too intense, you can go back to Virasana, or you can stay up here and still get the stretch in your toes without so much weight on them. Bring your arms down. It also makes you forget about your arms. <laughs> All right, take your hands around behind, change the interlock of your fingers, roll your shoulders back, lift your arms. Keep your chest lifted, lift your arms as high as possible. And then release your fingers, rotate your shoulders a few times, and stand up. Okay, right. grab a break if you have one. Grab a wall. A doorway is really nice because you can grab onto the sides of the doorway. But any wall will work. It's actually probably better just to use a regular wall. All right, so you want your feet about 18 inches forward. Make sure your toes are pointing forward and are equal. And then sit down for a wall sit. So, Kathy, uh, you're a little late today, so I just want to tell you that we're timing poses today. So uh, I'll, I have the second hand going on my little clock over here. And so I'm keeping our poses at about a minute. Uh, we did a three minute dog, but all the other poses have been about a minute. So press your feet into the floor, take your hips into the wall, roll your shoulders back, lift your chest. You can press your thighs down. Some people like to pull, hold onto their thighs. I don't find that that helps very much. All right, that was about a minute. Come back up. Take the block out. Turn on the floor. Stand up. This way. Stand with your feet together. Squeeze your legs in. Lift your arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. 
Then with your exhalation, bend your knees. Extend your arms up, pull your abdomen back for Utkatasana. If you're sitting back in a chair, straighten your arms. You can keep your arms alongside your ears or even further back. If this is easy for you, you can take your arms together. Pull your abdomen back. Lift your toes, make sure there's weight in your heels so it's not all coming forward. And then stand back up, release your arms down. All right. Now, if you uh, reach the floor for Uttanasana, you do not need a strap. If you don't reach the floor, go ahead and get a strap. And you're going to place the strap in between your big toe and the one next to it. The second toe, I guess it depends which way you're looking. I guess it's the second toe. So, so the strap, let me see, there we go. <laughs> I'm holding on to my big toes with the strap. I'm going to pull up with the strap and lift my chest. Now, if you can reach your big toe, you're gonna take your first two fingers and thumb and wrap around your big toe, like this. But you have to do it with a concave spine. So either like this or like this, all right? So come down, grab, either the strap or your big toes, and then move your chest forward. Look forward. Yes. Good. Keep pulling on your toes as if you were going to pull your toes off. But at the same time, push your toes into the floor so that there is this, like a, a toe strengthening exercise. I, mean, I, I was watching you and I forgot to look at the box. So we'll assume that it's been here about a minute. The forward bends I feel like go by much faster than the strength work. Then bring your hands on your hips, elbows to the ceiling, and come back up. All right, let's do some standing poses. I guess we've done a few. Oh, that was uh, Padagustasana. So I have the bricks on the back side of your mat. Stand in Tadasana. Bring your hands in front of your chest. Take your arms and legs wide. Turn to your right. Turn your right leg in. I didn't. I said turn your right leg in, but I meant turn your right leg out. You can turn your left leg in if uh, you have tight hips. Sometimes that helps. Take your right hand down to the brick. We teach a trikonasana, or the floor, or whatever your shin. All those work. All right, so press the big toe of the right foot down, then move your right hip forward. As you move your right hip forward, turn your left hip out to create space for your right hip to come forward. Extend your arms away from each other but keep them in one line as much as possible. So if you're higher up, look more like this. Lower down, look more like this. Now, press through your left foot. Inhale, come up. Turn to the other side. Turn your left leg all the way. 
Take your left arm down. Press down strongly with your left big toe. Then move your left hip forward and spin your right hip back. That leaves you room to move the left hip forward. Press your left hand into the floor. So, you, so you're not just resting onto that. So it's pushing back and extend your arms away from each other. Deep inhalation, and then with your exhalation, come back up. You can rest your arms. Turn your left leg up, and turn your right leg up. Virabhadrasana two. This is one of my least favorite poses to hold for a minute. <laughs> Lift your arms up. Exhale, bend your right leg. Look down at your right foot, you should be able to see your right big toe. If you can't, that means your knee is moving forward. So move your knee towards the little toe side. And to do that, push your right hip forward. So as the right hip moves forward, the right knee moves back. At the same time, turn your left thigh out. The left thigh will actually move forward of the body a little bit in this pose. You can look out over your right arm, extending your arms away from each other. Relax your shoulders. And then straighten your right leg. You can release your arms for a moment. Bring your feet to the front. Now turn your left leg all the way out. Lift your arms up, bend your knee. Again, look down at your foot. See if you can see your big toe. Now you might be able to see your knee, big toe because your knee isn't bent enough. <laughs> I think you guys are pretty good right here. Make sure you can see the big toe. Move that knee back and that hip forward. Now this is a hip stretch. Extend through your fingers, roll the right thigh back, look out over the left fingers, sit a little deeper, have your shoulders over your hips, and then inhale with an exhale, straighten your front leg. Bring your hands to your hips for a little break. Roll your shoulders back, lift your chest. All right. Oh, there was something I wanted to do in that pose. Anyway, we'll do it next time. Turn your right leg up. And lift your arms up. So that was Trikonasana, Virabhadrasana 2, and now we're going to do the combination of those in Parshvakanasana. Inhale with your exhale, bend your right leg, bring your right hand down to the floor or brick, take your left arm over. Move your right knee into your right arm, press to the outside of your left foot. Roll your abdomen towards the ceiling. From your left foot to your left fingertips extend. Get taller and taller. Maybe sit a little deeper. I wasn't sitting deeply enough. Rotate your chest. You can look up underneath your arm. And lift your left arm up. Press through your left foot, come up, go to the other side. Do 
Next exhalation, bend your left leg. Bring your left hand down to the brick or to the floor. Keep your right arm over your head. Press your left knee into your left arm. Roll your right thigh back, just like you did in your Vajrasana 2. Press the outside of your right foot and extend through your right fingertips. Rotate your abdomen towards the ceiling. Rotate your chest towards the ceiling. And then your spine just kind of keeps rotating and turns your head towards the ceiling. Lift your right arm up and come up. Turn your feet to the front. Take your arms and legs together. Back to Tadasana. Now we're gonna do uh, just, I consider forward bends little bits of rest. So we're gonna do Parsh Bhotanasana. So take your arms and legs wide. Oh, if you use blocks, you'll have them both on the right side. Then take your hands to your hips. Turn to your right. So turn your right leg all the way out, turn your left leg in. Keep both legs straight, elbows back, lift your chest, exhale, fold forward, bring your hands to the burks or to the floor, and start with a flat back. Move your left thigh back, so it's pressing into the back of the leg. Move your right hip in, or right leg into its hip. That makes any sense. <laughs> All right, fold over your front leg. Put the backs of your thighs up and you fold over the front leg. Bring your hands back to the bricks. You can bring your bricks with you as you press through your left heel and come up. Turn to the other side. Hands on your hips. Roll your shoulders back. Inhale, your exhale, come forward. Concave spine, flat back. Try to keep more weight, this is another way of thinking about it, more weight in the back heel. So how would you move more weight in the back heel? Now sometimes you come out of the pose by lifting the hips, and you don't really want to do that. You want to lift the inner thigh back. And then fold over the front leg. Keep your quadriceps lifted as you fold down. Then inhale, come up halfway. Then with your next inhalation, come all the way back up. All right. Parabrita Trikonasana. So revolve triangle pose. We're going to come into it from the pose we just did, Parabhutanasana. So turn to your right. Lift your left arm up. 
extend forward. Bring your left arm down. Either on the big toe side or little toe side. Rotate your chest. And then lift your right arm up. Press down with your left hand. Rotate your chest more and more. If it begins to hurt your top shoulder, you can take your hand back to your hip. Keep both quadriceps lifted. Then bring your right hand down, one hand either side of the front foot, hands to the hips, inhale, come up. Go to the other side. Turn to your left. Lift your right arm up. Exhale, bring your right hand down, either big toe or little toe side of the foot. Lift both quadriceps. Rotate your chest. Use your arm on the floor or against your leg to rotate your chest more. And then if it's okay on your shoulder, lift your left arm up. Press through your right heel and the left big toe. Keep your legs working and active. Extend your arms away from each other. Use the pressure downward to lift the top arm up. Then bring your hand to either side of the front foot, turn towards the floor, hands on your hips, inhale, come up, turn your feet forward, bring your feet together. Spread your toes, take your shoulders back, Vrikshasana, turn your left leg out. You might need a chair or a wall somewhere. Vrikshasana, tree pose. Bring your left foot <laughs> inside your right thigh. Find your balance. Take your arms to the side, palms up, lift your arms up. Extend through your fingertips, press down through your right heel. Make the sides of your waist longer. Have weight in the big toe side of your supported leg. Push your knee back to open up your hips. Extend through your fingers. Imagine somebody's holding your wrist up. That might help you balance. All right, bring your arms down, bring your leg down. I'll see that ends. All right, other side. Bring your right leg up. Lift your right leg up. Find your balance. Take your arms up to the side, palms up. Lift your arms up. Press down with the big toe side of your foot to move your, uh, this would be your left hip in. Lift up through your arms. Imagine somebody's holding your wrist and lifting you up. Mm -hmm. 
Move your right knee back. Bending through your fingertips. Pulling your outer left hip in. All right, release your arms. Release your legs. All right, take your feet uh, sticky mat distance apart. So it's a little wider than a regular Uttanasana. Fold forward, grab hold of your opposite elbow. All So here again, you're lifting the fronts of your legs and the backs of your legs. If it bothers your back to hold your elbows, then bring your hands to your shins or to the floor. Bring your hands to your hips, elbows to ceiling. Inhale, come all the way up. Okay, Virabhadrasana one. Okay, Virabhadrasana three will not be done today for a minute. That makes you feel better. <laughs> makes me feel better. Bring your hands in front of your chest. Take your arms and legs wide. Turn your palms up. Lift your arms up. Turn your right leg all the way out, turn your left leg in so you're facing the short side of your mat. And then with your exhalation, bend your right leg. Press through your left heel. So see if by lifting your arms up, you can take some of the weight out of your legs. Now I realize that's of course impossible, but it does make you feel a little bit lighter. Again, you should be able to see the big toe of your front foot. Sink your hips a little deeper. You want to get your front leg to a 90 degree angle. If it's comfortable for you, you can bring your palms together and look up at your thumbs. Then look forward. Take an inhalation. With your exhalation, straighten your front leg. Bring your feet to the front. And we can take our arms out for a second. <laughs> it's getting pretty hot in here. <laughs> All right. Arms up. Palms up, arms up, turn to your left. Exhale, bend your front leg. Descend your left hip. Look down, see if you can see at least a glimpse of your big toe. You don't have to see the whole thing, but you don't want the knee going inward. You'd be going straight ahead. Press through your right heel. Do a good stretch along the front of the right thigh. Extend your fingertips towards the ceiling. Pull your abdomen back, lift your fingers higher. Descend your hips a little lower. And if you want, you can bring your palms together and look up. Now straighten your front leg, turn your ten toes to the front, bring your hands to your hips. Keep your legs wide. Roll your shoulders back. Exhale, fold forward, Prasada Padottanasana. Inhale, extend forward, exhale. Bring your head towards the floor. Okay. 
fronts of your thighs, the backs of your thighs. You can have head support or not, whatever you're more comfortable with. Now bring your hands to your hips, elbows to the ceiling, inhale, come back up, step your feet together. All right, some of you will be happy to know that that's the end of the standing poses. Mm. Losing my voice today. Okay, so lie on your belly. If your floor is hard, you can take a, a blanket, unfold it about like this, and have it for underneath your hips. Lie down, face down, have your hands by your hips. So some of these uh, other poses are much harder to hold for a minute for many people. I do a lot of Shalambhasana, but uh, we're gonna do two 30 seconds rather than a, a minute straight. So lift your quadriceps and keep your legs strong. Extend your toes back. Roll your shoulders towards each other. Take a deep inhalation with your exhalation. Lift your chest, lift your legs, lift your arms. Lift from your inner thighs. Roll your shoulders towards each other and see how high you can get your chest. Once your chest is all the way as high as it'll go, see by gripping the tops of the thighs right where they hit the buttocks, see if you can lift your legs a little higher. All right, and come down. So that was 30 seconds. Usually not too much of a problem, but it depends on where your strength lies. Like I'm terrible at abs, so we won't be doing those. <laughs> Not for 30 seconds. All right, get ready again. Lift your quadriceps. With your next exhalation, lift up. Lift your chest as high as possible. Lift your legs as high as possible. Extend through your toes. Get your legs longer and longer. Take, try to take your fingers back toward your toes and your toes away from your fingers. Roll your shoulder blades towards each other. Lift from the inner thighs. Come down. All right. Roll your thighs in. Meet your legs a little closer together than they were before. They were probably about hip width apart, I didn't say. You want them a little closer together. I have thick thighs. They don't go together very well. So I'm just trying to get them together. But you want your toes pointing straight back for cobra pose. Bring your hands by your lower or your mid ribs. Roll your shoulders back, control the blades coming towards each other just like they were in Shalvasana. Elbows back. Press your hands into the floor and curl up. Keep your elbows bent. Shoulder blades going towards each other. Feet pressing into the floor. Press down with the index finger side of your hand. Curl up, there we go. Do a little tricep work with this uh, elbow bent. And then come back down. Reset. So Cobra pose, um, Bhujangasana. You think of a Cobra who only has, you know, a tail, it doesn't have legs. So see if you can think of your legs like a tail. Squeezing your legs together, pressing your feet into the floor. 
Roll your shoulders back, press your hands into the floor. Inhale with your exhalation, come back up. Now, see how much pressure you can get on the base of the index finger. It's really easy to get pressure on the little finger, a little harder to get pressure on the index finger. Elbows in towards your chest, shoulders back towards each other. Press your feet into the floor, coil more and more, more trying to move your chest forward. And then I think I forgot to look at the top. Come back down. All right. Yeah, we'll do upward facing dog. Again, it'll be 30 seconds. Uh, I don't think I can hold Chaturanga for 30 seconds, so uh, you can be happy about that. <laughs> we won't be doing Chaturanga. <laughs> but that would fit in right here if, if you were so inclined. All right, now bring your hands by your lower ribs. You can either have your toes tucked underneath or going straight back. Straight back is more traditional. In order to get my legs up, I have to tuck my toes underneath. Um, this one, the feet are hip width apart rather than together. Roll your shoulders back. Inhale with your exhalation, lift up. Lift your legs. Straight arms this time. So this was Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Yeah, shoulders back. Yes. All right, come down. Only one more of these. So. I have a hand and shoulder pain. Oh, okay. I was wondering. That's why I came to <laughs> Couple up. Okay, so you could stay with, with Sphinx pose. Um, what you were doing is bringing your shoulder blades towards each other. This is the last one of these, so. All right. Get ready. Tuck your toes under. Lift your thighs. Everyone can make your legs work. Everyone can make your shoulders work. So inhale, with an exhalation, lift up. Lift your thighs away from the floor. Ah, I see what you're doing. Okay. Uh, we're in an upward facing dog. I mean, you're more than welcome to do chattering if you want caffeine. But yeah, we're doing upward facing dog. Roll your shoulders toward each other. You can look up. And come down. Press back into child's pose. All right. Lie on your back. Knees bent for Trutush Padasana. Bring your heels in as close to your hips as you can. Bring your upper arms next to your ribs. Press your upper arms down into the floor and lift your chest. Then press your feet into the floor, lift your hips up. Roll your shoulders under, extend your fingers toward your feet. You can grab your ankles if they're nearby or just extend them. You can also stand on your hands. So you can turn your palms up and press your heels into your fingers. Keep weight on the big toe side of your feet. That'll keep your legs parallel or more likely to be parallel. See how much of the backs of the thighs you can lift up. Keep your neck soft, your jaw soft. Mm. 
And then lower your hips back down to the floor. Take a breath. All right, reset. So either grabbing your ankles, stepping on your hands, or keeping your hands alongside. Any of those will work. Press down through your feet. Inhale, lift, or exhale, lift your hips up. Roll your shoulders under. When you roll your shoulders under, you're able to lift higher. Press down to the big toe side of your foot, your feet. Soften your neck and throat. And you don't want to grip your jaw. If you grip your jaw, your neck will tense up. So either in this one or the next one, we're going shoulder stand neck, or even bridge pose, which some of you will do instead. Uh, you don't want your neck to be tight. Keep pressing through your heels, lifting your hips, and then slowly lowering back down. So that one was a minute each. All right, so you're going to set up your shoulder stand or uh, bridge pose. So if you're doing bridge pose, you'll either have a, a block on your hips and a block at the wall for your feet. I can do it with my feet. There we go. Like this. Or you could be on two bolsters or one bolster or any brick. There's all different ways. Let me know if you want guidance there. Otherwise, you're going to set up your shoulder stand. So you want a pose that you can do comfortably for five minutes, because we're going to be up for five minutes today. Maybe we'll do a minute um, plow afterwards. Get ready. I'm going to go ahead and set my timer. This one I can't do on the phone, so I have to do my watch. You can come up into Salomo Sarvagasana or Bridge Post. Okay, remember the most important thing is to keep your neck relaxed. Start tensing your jaw. This will not be a good pose for you. You'll feel like you'll get a neck ache, maybe a headache. So focus on that first. I'm going to come down and look at you guys. So Laura, I would like you to bring your right elbow underneath you a little more. Your hips are shifting to the left, I believe. Uh, yes. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Uh, so as you stay there, Chaya, your legs kind of roll out. So keep them activated. Yeah. That was good, Bob. Spread your toes. 
Kathy, have you ever used a strap in Sarvagasana? Yes? Okay. That might be a good idea from time to time. Your elbows are a little wide. That's okay. I mean, we're going to be here for a while, so it's better to be a little more comfortable. <laughs> oh, good. The dog did not spit on your face. Uh, uh, better uh, back together. Better to be a little more comfortable and stay longer. Um, about two more minutes. So, in shoulder stand, you want to get your shoulders. Well underneath you. As much as possible, move your hips forward and your thighs back. And you straight up and down. This will keep the weight from resting into your wrists. I know many people, and especially when learning shoulder stand, um, feel like it's in the wrist. You might feel like some stretch in the neck, but it really shouldn't pain anywhere. Um, I feel like there's some poses where there's a, a little bit of pain involved, uh, kind of like an intense stretch. But shoulder stand isn't one of them. That I know of. I mean, I imagine that after a while, uh, it just feels like too much, it feels too heavy, you're putting too much weight on your neck, and, and then you have to come down. But really, uh, shoulder stand is a core pose. If you want to feel that, just take your arms away from your back and stay up. So you'll feel, <laughs> well, I feel a jiggle. But it's like this, uh, the, the ab muscles and the back muscles are, are working to keep myself in balance. You know, all balance poses are core poses, and this is no different. All right, take your legs over your head. Halasana. That was, that was five minutes of shoulder stand. So in Halasana, move your thighs up. Uh, Taya, you can take your feet uh, in Baddha Konasana, if that is uh, tolerable. So you can still stay on the brick and take your feet in Baddha Konasana, if there's something different. And anyone in uh, bridge pose can do that. So press your thighs towards the ceiling. Now keep your legs straight. And as much as it's comfortable for your neck, move your feet away from you. Remember to keep your throat soft. It's a little, for me, it's a little harder in this pose. If you want to put in Karnapadasana, ear pressure pose, now would be the time. And that was a minute in Halasana. I think we'll go back to your chest. And then slowly roll down. Okay, you can come off the brick and rest your hips on the floor. Anyone in uh, bridge pose? I think everyone else is doing shoulder stand. And for the end of shoulder stand, you can either rest your uh, head this off the, the blankets, or you can rest your head and shoulders off the blankets, letting your hips rest on the blanket pile. Bring your knees into your chest, come over to your side. All right. 
Sit up. So if you need to sit on a blanket for Dandasana, go ahead and do so. Uh, if you like head support for forward bends, grab either a brick or two bricks and a blanket. So if you're here already, sit in Dandasana, press your thighs down. Take your hand on the inside of your left leg, roll it back, bring your left heel into its own thigh for Janu Shushasana. Turn towards your right leg. Inhale with your exhalation, reach forward, drag your foot. Lift your chest. And then exhale, fold forward over your leg. So you can rest your forehead. Or you can just let it hang. These are perfectly acceptable. Usually what we do forward bends or when I do forward bends, uh, after shoulder stand, I like head support, um, just because the, the energy level is already down. Um, I think it also helps for any leftover tension. You know, even though I, I keep on harping about like relax your neck, relax your neck, relax your neck, um, you still get a little tension in there, just from it stretching. So the head support kind of helps me with that. Press your outer, let's see, left thigh down, press your right thigh down. Again, good stretch across the side of your, your, your uh, left side of your body. Inhale, come back up. Hope those four bends go by fast. <laughs> stretch your leg out. Sometimes I do three minutes, uh, especially with head support. Other side, drain your shots, head and knee pose. All right. Press your left thigh down, reach forward, grab your left leg. Inhale, extend forward. Exhale, fold forward over your left leg. Relax into the pose. Press your outer right thigh down to get more of a stretch along the side of your right side of your body. At the same time, keep your left thigh strong, engaged. Relax the skin of your face. Inhale, come back up. Come back to Dandasana. Paschimottanasana. Engage both quadriceps. Press your thighs down. Inhale, lift up. Come forward, drag your feet or your shins. I'll start with a brick too. So with a brick, you have a Break between your legs and come forward. Or blanket support. So as you relax into the pose, one of the tricks is to keep your, the areas, you know, pretty much neck down active. So 
So your arms are working, your legs are working. In this pose, it's mostly the arms and legs. Uh, and then at the same time, keep your forehead relaxed, don't break your jaw. The head support also helps with the relaxation of the forehead and skin around the face. You can come back up. All right, one more wide legged forward bend. So, oh, let me out. So now, you can take your legs wide. Either a brick, a chair. And come forward. So in this one, the arms aren't working that much. But the legs still stay active. Toes spread, thighs pressed down. Notice uh, if you're down pretty far, chances are the inner legs are pressing a little more than the outer legs, so you can get some more weight in your outer legs. Set yourself up for Shavasana. Lie back. Roll your shoulders under. Let your legs go. If your back feels tight, put something under your knees or on top of your thighs. Both of those work. Press the weight of your body into the floor. Soften your neck and throat. Finish your job. Rest your tongue into the base of your mouth. and use the next few moments to focus on your breath. Deepen your breath. Thank 
Bend your knees. Roll to your side. Lift yourself up to seated. Take your arms wide, lift your chest, bring your palms together in front of your heart. Think of something you're grateful for. Namaste.